officials who enter uh, this building as they want uh, their voices to be heard by the IEC. Leave it there. Thank you so much for highlighting this uh, issue for us. Mr. Jhajana, our teacher. Let's bring you this now. Unskilled youth are more at risk of their jobs, and this is the findings of a study by Youth Capital. It says that young people will be empowered through work experience and training. So let's discuss this with uh, Crystal Duncan William from Youth Capital. He's very time this morning. Good morning to you. Um, what is the data ground into reality that the youth is currently facing? especially when you speak of youth unemployment. Thanks so much. Um, what we did for our report, uh, Unlocked Jobs, which was launched yesterday, is we uh, looked at existing data, so the National Income Dynamics Survey and the, and the National Income Dynamics Survey, CRAM, which was conducted over the course of lockdown. Um, and what we saw is that a youth were as likely to be employed um, in 2017 as they were um, during uh, the hard lockdown in April of last year. Um, and what that tells us is that, you know, if we look at the numbers over time, they were steadily increasing. Um, while COVID has made things worse, even without COVID, young people would be in a very precarious situation. And we know that um, those are the most affected are those with lower levels of education um, and young black women. Now, with that being said, I mean, what, what can be done to assist young people here? Because we know that already youth unemployment numbers um, have exacerbated due to COVID-19. Is there hope at this point in terms of what strategies can be put in place to assist young people? We believe that there are, but it's going to be a coordinated effort. Um, and so youth capital really believes the key to, to tackling the unemployment crisis is putting young people's lived experiences at the center. And secondly, having a common action plan, um, which all stakeholders should be working towards. We don't think anyone can solve all of the problems. And so the action that a number of these development organizations have endorsed together with us puts forward points which we think um, can really begin to shift the needle for, for young people. And, and we unpack some of them by publication, really, really practical things like um, from big government interventions on public employment programs um, and how to make those really work for young people through to smaller initiatives being taken up by small organizations who work with young people using WhatsApp bots um, to make job seeking more affordable for young people. And so it's these range of solutions from big to small uh, that's really needed. And speaking about the affordability when looking for jobs, I know that also uh, some of the priorities you speak about is you know, actually getting them to acquire their qualifications. Uh, how important is this uh, from the youth capital's perspective? When we look at all of the quarterly level four survey stats, we always see that you know graduate unemployment, um, one, it is increasing, continues to remain tiny compared to the unemployment amongst those without a check. Um, and so another thing we think that could unlock opportunities for young people is making the second chance program work a bit better. So that's the program by the Department of Basic Education for to rewrite them a check. Um, program exists, but a lot of young people don't know about it, don't understand it. The registration processes are not clear. The information isn't easy to find on the website. And we think just by making information more accessible for young people, it could unlock that opportunity for them and at least get them a metric, um, which does improve their chances of employment slightly. Crystal, on the note, how important is public employment program just in play a role here to assist these young people in gaining work experience? So many young people step out of school without, you know, any idea of what it's like to be in the working world and also having no adults in their household who are employed who can, you know, kind of guide them and coach them. And so these short-term public employment opportunities are one way for young people to really get some transferable skills and, and to get some experience which helps them. Uh, access the next opportunity and hold on to that next opportunity. Um, and these public employment programs, as we've seen over the course of the last year, have been a big investment point from government. Um, and so we think with this big investment, we really need to make sure that young people get mentorship on the job, they get a core set of competencies and skills that they can use for their, their future work. Um, and that also young people give information around exit pathways um, and what to next because these, these contracts are short term by their nature and, and many young people go back into being unemployed and, and just sitting at home afterwards um, because of a lack of information or guidance. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate your time this morning highlighting uh, this jobs emergency affecting young people in South Africa. Crystal Duncan William from Youth Capital, thank you so much. Fine. All right. On that note, though, it's time for your sport updates. Here's Adabonakawa. Good morning.